Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Punaktu Sahaviyam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadi Tamastuma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 May Brahman guide us, may he protect us, may he give us strength and right understanding, may love and harmony be with us all. Peace, peace, peace. It has um, been our joy to have uh, Swami Sarvadevananda with us these past eight days. Uh, he gave last Sunday's service, the Tuesday class, the Thursday class, went to Kansas City on Friday, did a program there Friday evening, Saturday morning, and um, before leaving later uh, this afternoon, He's going to conduct this service. The topic is the ninefold path of devotion. Okay. And good morning. Nice to see you all again. <coughs> Today, we'll talk about the ninefold devotion. Actually, this is the story of Ramayana when Sabari went to see, not went to see, she was in her place in the cottage of a hermit, Matanga, sage, and Rama came there and she was waiting her whole life for Rama to come and ultimately did Rama came and gave his message to Shabari and that is an eternal message which can help us grow in our spiritual life. As we know, Sri Ramakrishna in this age have said that in this iron age, the path of devotion is wide and safe and that is easy also. Because God has given us the very sense of loving something. That emotion is a very natural thing with us. We love, we cannot live in the life without loving something or somebody or some object. But how to love God, who is the essence of all beings, who shines through the eyes of everyone, who moves in the body of every being. To love him is the goal of life because one can attain to fulfillment. Our earthly love is also love. It is love for God, whether we know or not. But the question is that that love, because it is focused not on the total sense of it, as it is focused on only a particular object or particular person, it has its weakness. And it can bring suffering, misery, because it is limited. Yet loving God means loving the unlimited, loving Him as He is. In Sahasra Sirsha Purushaha Sahasra Aksha Sahasrapat Sabhumi Ing Vishwato Vritya Atta Tishtadda Shangulam He 
is the essence of everyone. So he moves in million feet. He walks on million feet. He works on millions of hands. He sees through millions of eyes. He tastes through millions of mouths. So if one can love him, then the love become perpetual. Love become abiding. And also the peace derived out of it becomes abiding. That's why love for God is so much appreciated in every spiritual tradition. In Narada's book of devotion, in the aphorisms, Narada has defined bhakti or devotion. Shankara has also defined, defined bhakti. Shankara defined bhakti as love for the self is called bhakti. Not self meaning that little self, but the divine self, which is the substance of everyone. And Narada describes that it is called love for that. Sa, that means that bhakti or devotion is defined as tu, but asmin, in this, in this reality, parama prema rupa, of the nature of prema, of the nature of love. What type of love? Parama prema, supreme love. Our love is divided, is it not? The same mind, love subjects. I like I like this thing, I like that thing, I like that thing. The same if, I, if my mind is 100 unit of my mind. I love so many things. So my love is not one pointed. And the joy we get because of that digression of the mind, we never get joy of that full-fledged concentrated mind. Here it is said, Tasmin parama prema rupa, that prema, that love, which is parama, the supreme love. How the supreme love is available? Because if the mind is given, total mind is given, then supreme love will come. That means love for God for love's sake, total, unconditional. Whether you love or it doesn't matter, I love, that's, more, that's all. That is the definition unconditional love. There we find that Narada describes that how does it come? There also we find the ninefold stages. But my topic today, I thought that I will be talking about Savari and then I can match with Narada later on. Let me do justice to think that Savari is our target today. <laughs> so Savari says that you, you to have love, love for and she was loving Rama from her very young girlhood. She belonged to the clan of Sabara, which is a wild tribe. And she and her mom was there probably. This to serve the sage Matanga. One great sage was there, Matanga. And when he she used to go with mom and serve. The sage was so divine and so illumined that they used to feel attraction for his purity and love. Ultimately, the mother passed away. The young girl started serving Rama, uh, sorry, Matanga. And then Matanga also became old. And he said, uh, I am going to die. I am going to leave this body, but you live here. You live in my cottage and you wait. Rama will come in your life. One day, God, who has incarnated in the form of Rama, he will come and be here to give you his blessed, blessed presence before you. So she is to wait every day. This is the yearning, what is needed for the highest joy. That much dedication, that much love is needed 
she used to pluck flowers every morning. She used to get a shower because thinking today Rama may come. Okay, so how to prepare yourself if, if if the Lord comes and you are not prepared, and it is a forest. She lives in a forest, so what she has, she can do? She used to pluck flowers after the shower. Then she will put flower petals on the road. Rama will come through this. He will walk. So uh, he will feel comfortable. And then he will also pluck the fruits and taste whether it is sweet or sour. And if it is sweet, then he keeps, after tasting a little, the rest of the piece he keeps. Rama will eat it. <laughs> See the love. Love has gone to such an extent that I love him, I cannot give him what is not best. So how can I know it is best? So you test yourself, bite a piece, and then keep the rest of the thing for Lord Rama. See what a tremendous love has exceeded the no normal ritualistic level of love. And then garlanding, pre preparing a garland, preparing a sandal paste, and whole day repeating the name Rama, 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 and waiting, waiting, one day, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, and it went on, and she became quite pretty old by that time. But she didn't give up the hope that Lord Rama will come, because his guru has said he will come. With that hope, he lived the whole life. And the age is not mentioned, but she was pretty old, and waiting every day, and one day Rama came. And seeing Rama, he said, who are you? He said, I am Rama. Oh, you are Rama. And she didn't know what to do then. <laughs> Out of high emotion. She was lying down flat in the feet and weeping and crying. And see, it happens with our, if you wait for someone whole life and you see that person after that, what will be your condition? So you can imagine that Sabari was so much into that ecstatic mood that she didn't know what to do, how to welcome, how to serve, how to do, what to do. Though she is prepared every day because from every day's common preparation, the flower, plucking the flowers, getting ready all day, fruits from the forest, trees, and then pave the whole path strewn with the petals of the soft flowers like that. And then she totally surrendered at Rama's feet. And Rama was also very pleased. And then she said that, please advise me something. When she, had, she asked for some advice, then Rama gave this nine, some ideas about devotion, how devotion can grow. So then the question is that, sometimes we think that devotion is dualism. Non-dualism is higher. I think that this is a very wrong concept in our mind. It's not the question of higher and lower. It is a question of your nature and your practice. One cannot attain to love for God unless one has right discrimination. Why you will go for loving God if you think that you are satisfied here and you can get that fulfillment here. Unless reason tells you that whatever in this universe we see, it is transient, it is limited, it is within the bound of time and space and causation. Our mind will not lean towards that eternal truth which is abiding. Why it will go for? Why to love? So, knowledge is very much needed to grow love. And love is also impossible. If, if one has only the knowledge, it is intellectualism. Without love, it makes nothing. It is a scholarly thing. It can satisfy the intellect, but not soothe the heart. So, knowledge and devotion are to be practiced in the singular life together. That's why Ramakrishna said, Jnana Misra Bhakti. The bhakti, the devotion, which is mixed with jnana. Ramakrishna said that they keep the knowledge of non-dualistic knowledge at the edge of your cloth 
or in your pocket and then you do whatever you want to do huh? that means without knowledge devotion is impossible huh? and without devotion knowledge is impossible but what we talk in our day to day life that devotion is called the ritualistic devotion normally our devotion is waving a, an incense or offering a flower or praying some prayers we say something in the mouth we pray but our heart speaks something else so when heart and expression in the mouth becomes one that is one pointed actual full focused prayer that is a different prayer that that is called two levels of bhakti two levels of jnana what we discriminate i am not the body i am not the mind everything is this world is transient this is knowledge the path of knowledge but this path of knowledge is the practicing religion you can say practicing path of knowledge and the there is another knowledge level of knowledge where one will see the truth face to face experiential that is called para paragyanam that is the supreme knowledge that that supreme knowledge makes one person liberated while in this body that's why i call jivan mukti they attain to that state of freedom when they really tune themselves to that level of knowledge but what we do every day it is a practicing knowledge i try to think i love this world i think that it is real but reason i try to bring the reason to say oh no it is only seemingly apparent it is seeming thing is apparent it changes 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 but i am not convinced of the reality which is unchanging behind this change it is intellectualism first that's why it is practicing knowledge path of knowledge and then at the end of this journey one attains to that knowledge which is called paragyanam the supreme knowledge so devotion also in this process one we practice it is practicing knowledge practicing devotion every day we offer flower we offer incense we offer some of our fruits and candies to god and eh? sometimes we do some sandal paste or some perfume we put it is all i am thinking as if god is here accepting my prayer accepting my flowers and offerings but in the core of my heart i i see it is a picture it is nothing more than an image or a icon so this is the bhakti bhakti it is called and in this bhakti in this devotion there is do's and don'ts it is like that when you get uh, to know someone at the very beginning so you know some friend and suppose that friend wants to come to your home what do you do you become very formal you make a seat you make a nice uh, table for in you know, flower and the bouquet of flower these that so everything formal because first friendship huh? now that friendship grew to your intimacy and very intimate and do you care friend says i'll come well, come what is there when he comes comes and he sits anywhere so many seats are there he sits anywhere oh you want to have tea oh there is a tea wow hit hit the <laughs> hit that water and get a tea <laughs> cup of tea yourself because you know he is your friend he is so intimate that that formalities has dropped off that is the para bhakti then you don't feel i'll i'll have to be formal with everything what i do what i say how i treat and how i put the cup how i put the saucer and all these things this becomes secondary so in spiritual life that is the para bhakti supreme devotion where people forget about everything but love love for god it is example is <coughs> ramakrishna's life example in the old time we find srimati who loved krishna srimati used to uh, stand before the mirror and dress herself put flowers in the hair hair doing and all these things and putting and thinking not that i am beautiful not that is not the idea in her mind her idea is that krishna loves me to see in this in this particular way of dressing eh? in this particular way of putting the flowers she he likes 
It is his liking, Krishna, 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 Krishna. And in that absorbed mood, one time it comes that she doesn't see her face at all. She sees as if Krishna in the reflection, in the mirror when she stands. That means you forget yourself, total self-abnegation. Then you merge with your beloved. The love means that. Two souls are separate. And that is the and there is formality. But when love grows, the differences become shorten and shorten and shorten. And it comes, and at the point of perfect union, <coughs> they forget their body, their consciousness, their outward consciousness, their time, their space, and outward situation. Totally, they remain in that absolute oneness. That is called yoga. In Gita, it has been mentioned, every chapter is meant yoga. Yoga means union. Union with whom? That's why devotional practice takes that we are the, uh, in, the in the Vaishnava tradition. God is the only beloved. We are, we are all lovers. That's why you go to Vrindavan. Everyone thinks that they are all women. There is no man. <laughs> that story is there. In Vrindavan, <coughs> once Sanatana Goswami was living there and Mira, the beloved of Krishna, she wanted to, she went to see that holy man, Sanatana Goswami, who was a disciple of Sri Chaitanya. But he was a monk. Sanatana Goswami said, I don't, uh, I don't meet women. <laughs> then, then Mira replied, oh, is it so? I thought that in the whole of Vrindavan, there is only one man, he is called Krishna. So there is another man also. <laughs> and when he heard that, his consciousness awake. This God is our only beloved. We are all women and he is my husband. So that is the spirit there. That means perfection comes in the union with God. That is a symbolic way of looking. So devotion leads us to that type of union which is eternal, which is abiding which is changeless and attaining to that one becomes uh, Narada says stabdho bhavati mattu bhavati uh, atma ramu bhavati At that, attaining to that love that ecstatic love and union with God which is called the culmination of bhakti para bhakti then one becomes silent stabdho it becomes mute like Ramakrishna used to be mute. Even the physical symptoms, the breathing will stop. Stop do bhavati matto. Sometimes he'll be intoxicated in that. Ramakrishna dancing in such a way, totally forgetful about anything. Matto bhavati. Absorbed in such ecstatic joy that he physically he is becoming totally uncontrolled as it were. Matto bhavati. Atma Rama sometimes. He is absorbed in the Atman and, the, and enjoying the bliss of Atman here on the day. So, Atma Ramu Bhavati. So, this is the glory of devotion. That's why we need devotion. And that devotion should be practiced with knowledge. And the supreme knowledge and supreme devotion, not two. The love, you see in the chapter of the Gita, you will find, you are reading the chapter of the Bhakti. And what is the symptoms of a bhakta or a devotee when one attains to that love, that perfection? And what is in the second chapter, what is the symptom of a gyani who realizes God in the non-dualistic way or in a discriminative path? You see, there is no distinction. The symptoms and behaviors of these two people following this path or that path leads to the same experience. So, we have to understand that whatever is your choice, you please <coughs> take up that. <coughs> Don't make hierarchy amongst these two paths of sadhana. It is higher, it is lower. <coughs> Rather, move on in your path and be a sincere seeker of truth in whatever path is your own uh, temperament. It guides, your temperament will guide you and it will be easier for one person to reach that. So, <clears throat> Swabari, 
let me come to that sober story. That means what I wanted to say in between, that knowledge and devotion ultimately leads to the same experience. Different paths may be there, but we must have to couple them together. Uh, otherwise, it is like driving the car. I give this example again and again. Driving the car. Suppose your steering does not move. It happened with me once. <laughs> I was driving <laughs> and the steering is not moving in any direction. I wonder, what's the point? What can I do now? <laughs> See, car everywhere, all right, left, right and front. What has happened? There is a belt probably yeah, in the inside, which sometimes you have to check after two, three years. But normally nobody uh, looks at that. And that happened with me that day. <laughs> and I am trying too hard to move the steering, but it is not moving. And gradually, gradually the speed eh, came to slow down and the, all the cars understood something and we actually were saved. Had it been in the freeway, there would have been a very difficult situation to survive. But suppose this is in our life. Your steering does not move. That means steering is your knowledge. Your gas pressure is there. Okay. The car speeds up, speeds up, speeds up. And the steering does not move. Then what will happen? It is a total crash. Is it not? So you have your knowledge. No knowledge. But your emotion is geared up. What will happen? So it is, it is risky. And the, or contrary to that, suppose steering is moving, but you put your gas pressure, the car is not moving at all. That means devotion. You are lack in devotion and you are talking only intellectual thing, something which your heart does not corroborate. Then your car does not move. So this is a car. To move this car, we need head and heart blended together and to make the spiritual journey. But how we can go for that <clears throat> grow that love? The Savari, when he uh, praised Rama and offered the flowers and the garlands and asked, eat, eat this, yeah. this those eaten, <laughs> tasted fruits, pieces of fruits. So there is a movie, in the movie Ramayana, you can find it. I was observing that day. It's wonderfully they have presented. So Rama and Lakshmana, both of them were there because in the wandering days of or uh, the uh, of Rama, and Sita was abducted by that time, so Sita was not there with them. And when Rama was moving, he heard that this is the hermit, the place of hermit of uh, Matanga Sage. So he came and then met Savari. And then Savari first pressed his feet and then wiped out and then cried and weeped, whatever, all those things. And then <laughs> offering the garland and all those then tried to give them some, eat, eating something. So he is eating what he has, she has tested herself before. And Lakshmana is sitting <laughs> on the right side and he said, please, you also take. <laughs> the Lakshmana looks at her and said, you ate all these things and you are giving it to me. How can I eat it? <laughs> Rama was very pleased because it is given with devotion. So Rama is enjoying the fruits. Eh? But Lakshmana was a little scary about that type of food to eat. <laughs> but seeing Rama, what he will do, he will have to follow Rama, what he can do. Ultimately, he accepted that. So this, uh, after that, then uh, Ra Rama asked, where actually exactly this spot where the sage Matanga used to meditate. And he was a great austere uh, sage. His spiritual power is tremendous spiritual power. Actually, Rama went there and somebody showed. And there, as if a little a vibration, as you say vibration, a glow of light is still present there because of his uh, result of his austerity, great austerity, tapas. It is called. And then... After showing this, Rama was going to back, going to come back. Then Savari said, no, I am waiting for you whole life. <laughs> I don't want to carry this body further. <laughs> but I want to get some advice from you, instruction from you. 
So please do advise me uh, in the path of devotion. So he started. You find it, <coughs> this is the way, <coughs> the Tulsidas Ramayan it is very, very sweet and it has got its own tune. Thousands and thousands of people in India who are Rama devotees, they read this. This is written in uh, colloquial language so that the masses can easily absorb the beauty and charm of this uh, love of Rama. So, <clears throat> here Rama said to give this advice and seeing the ecstatic mood of Savari, he appreciated her and said that I am really pleased with your devotion and your love. So, <coughs> you are really fortunate. Then she said <laughs> that this devotion is very rare. And, and nobody can get me without this type of extreme love and devotion. He said, Yati pati kula dharma barai dhanabala parijana guna chaturai bhagati hina nara sohoi kaisha binu jalabarida dekhi ajaisha. He said that, that it, if a person maybe have high rank, rank in life, high status in life, jati, pati, kula, dharma, eh? lineage, I belong to this, eh? this, this prestigious family. So you may have all this material pomp and grandeur, but, and you may have dhanavala, you are a moneyed man, maybe you have so many friends and well-wishers and everyone adores you, appreciates you. And your qualities are superb qualities. In every direction, people praise your qualities. These are all meaningless. If one has no bhagati hina nara so hai kaisa, that man who have no devotion for God is useless, worthless. In giving the example, it is like when in a scorching earth, the clouds come, people are willing to, they get joy. The particularly the agriculture people, the cultivators. Oh, after so many dry uh, days, the rain is coming. So they see some sky, uh, some cloud in the sky. But suppose if the cloud does not carry any rain in that, what is the meaning of the cloud? It only hides the sun. It doesn't do anything good. So if in one's life there is no devotion, it is considered the sweetness, the the drop of water is like the love. If one does not carry that love, then their life is meaningless like that of the clouds which come only to cover but not to shed the rain to the scorching life. So that is the appreciation and that is the way one should practice devotion because devotion is very essential in life to bring us to that, that type of perfect peace. Now, Rama says that now I will tell you the ninefold devo devotion. Nabada bhagati kaha utahi pahi Savadhan sunu dharu manamahi I am talking, I am telling you the ninefold devotion. <coughs> And you please pay your full attention. And with that, then you can absorb the inner significance of this. He said, first, what is that nine? Out of that nine, first is, Prathama Bhagati Santanaha Karasanga Dusarirati Mama Katha Prashanga The very first sign of devotion is that you like some type of friendship, kinship with those people who are sadhu, holy people. Huh? Holy people does not mean always monks. You are also holy. Huh? Those who think about God, they are holy. That means 
there will be tendency in the mind. The very first sign of devotion is that one will feel, oh, when I shall go to some people of my liking, who can, who loves God, whom I can talk and open my heart and speak a few words and get inspiration from each other. So, first sign is that santanaha karasanga, the association, the tendency to associate with holy people. This desire, actually, that is the starting point of spirituality. Because we learn much more from a holy person than that of tons of books. We can read tons of books. You, have, you, you, you people here, you are all have that experience of the Swamis. So you know how the little contact or association with the holy people can ignite the spiritual flavor in us and give a pointed direction. It may be that a holy company is not available. It is not so easily available. Wherever we go, we cannot get holy company. But by you, one's own good karma and one's purity of the mind, who has finished much of bad karmas, then mind will take him or her in close company of the holy people. And that holy people, even it may be a little momentary contact with the holy people, but it will have its tremendous effect in our life, in future life. It will manifest. That touch will be manifest in post-life. In our life, actually we are blessed. We got this holy company. And what we are today, it is their blessings, their touch, their life-giving experiences or their teachings, what they have given by the presenting their life. I know of one Swami, he was one day walking, you know, and he was, he was reading, he was a Vedanti Swami. So, Sarvam Khalu Idang Brahma, everything is Brahman, that is his attitude. So I was walking, it was a midnight or something, around 11 o'clock. And then he heard a, a barking of some dogs at a distance. And he was walking, he was not saying anything. Just hearing the barking sound, he, said, he pointed out, See, that is Brahman, that is Brahman. My God, barking of dog sound can create the inspiration that it is Brahman? That is the life-giving message of the sages and saints. You, you need not have to read the whole Chandogu Upanishad to understand God is everywhere and Brahman is everywhere. And, and when he said, he then pointed out, you see, look at me, actually all the hairs of his body standing erect in joy. That, that a single sound can create that tremendous inspiration inside and can take him to the consciousness of God and that can give the joy whole body is thrilled with joy that hearing the sound, that sound, whatever, I do not know what is was working in his mind, but that triggered that type of spiritual inspiration to give him the joy all through his body. And it was standing there, I watched for about one or two minutes. So this is the point. This is more valuable. That's why Holy Company has been talked about the very beginning. That is the first sign of devotion. And then second is what? Dusari rati mama katha prasanga. Rati means uh, your tendency, your taste, your love, your one-pointed devotion for what? Mama katha, my words. Eh? Talking about Krishna, talking about the Holy Christ, Buddha, Rama, like that. So that the divine, the divine manifested in the human body, that can be a, 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 an expression there. So, talking about them, this is what we are doing now, this is talking about. We find joy in this, you find joy in this, that's why you are here. You have so many duties, so many responsibilities, but why you run for evening classes or Sunday lectures for this? Because you love to hear Mama Rati, Mama Katha Prasanga. Whenever there is some holy discussion about God, about spirituality, 
you feel like drawn, that is a sign that you have grown into devotion. So second point is that friendship for my divine sport. So you are very much interested to listen about God and His glories. Now third, to get a guru is of course. <laughs> so third point is that guru pang pada pang kajo seva tisari bhakti aman to serve the guru. To serve the guru, not with pride. It is with humility. Sometimes you do serve somebody and think that oh, I have given so much for that guy. <laughs> it is not that way. You are fortunate that you get this chance to serve the holy person, the guru in the guru in your life. So guru pada pankaja seva tisari. This is third one. This bhakti bhagati amana. That means being very egoless, prideless. It is my fortune. Who will, you may say that why we get such chance to serve our gurus? Yes, really difficult. Guru has so many disciples. Eh? And particularly in our order, if you go to India, our President Maharaj who is the guru, he will have thousands and thousands of devotees because all over India, he is the guru. So, who will be able to serve him? Then what is the service to guru? He cannot prepare food every day for him or do anything. How many food he can take? <laughs> <laughs> but only you can serve him in whatever way. Guru wants what? Why guru? Guru wants that we should be illumined. Guru wants that we should be freed from our bondage and suffering of life. We'll be aware of our divine self. So that's why he has given mantra. That's why he has given all this uh, spiritual instructions to follow in total Guru's instruction that is Guru Sheva we can take this meaning and when you are realized Guru will be most happy is it not so this is the third path to follow Guru's instruction or to serve Guru with egolessness don't put your ego there oh I did that I did that I did that for Guru you did everything but it is with ego it is all lost if it is without ego, then it takes us to God. And fourth is Chauti Bhagati Mama Guno Gana Karai Kapata Taji. Chauti Bhakti, the fourth Bhakti, the fourth devotion is singing his praises. And the devotees, you see Vaishnava devotees and they will find whole day they are chanting the name of Lord, they are singing some glories of God, this um, talking about the divine sport, which Bhagavat. Uh, Bhagavat is the holy text. Suppose someone reads about the uh, Bible and others and where the uh, Christ is um, helping all types of devotees who are coming and taking refuge at his feet. Uh, say Mary Magdalene is coming and offering her salutation and her love and respect and Christ is redeeming that person. These are all the holy association and we can see, we can sit here and think about that. That is also the sign of devotion, fourth type of bhakti. Mantra japa mama dira vishasha panchama bhajana so veda prakasha In the Veda it has been that knowledge of the Veda can be revealed only by mantra japa. Guru has given the mantra. The holy name, the reputation of the holy name, mantra japa, not mantra japa mechanically. In a Buddha, you go to Tibet and other places, you will find that everywhere some they have their drum. What is prayer, prayer will they call it? Prayer will. And the philosophy is that you take one the mantra, Om Manipadme Hum, and rotate it. So so many rotation it does, your japa is multiplied that times. That's a foolish idea, no? <laughs> <coughs> you do yourself. So you round, turn one time and it is, it is rotating and it, your, your japa is done. <laughs> Maybe there is some meaning I am not criticizing. <laughs> but, but we should not follow that. <laughs> we should have to do japa one, 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 one. And it should be like in the breath. 
So you need not do any rosary then. <laughs> that is called ajapa will come. Eh? So mantra japa is the fifth practice. And how to do? With all love, not mechanically. Because I had to do, Guru has said, you have to do 108 or something. Okay, I did it. No, not that. Every mantra, every time you repeat the name, you think of the divine, you feel his divine presence, you feel that he or she, whatever your chosen ideal, is pleased with that and feel that connectedness. That is with Panchama Bhajana. Uh, that is the fifth form of adoration where it has been mentioned in the scriptures that mantra japa with vishasa, with faith, with conviction, that is the fifth sadhana. Sixth, chattadama sila birati bahu karma nirata nirantara sajjana dharma. That is the dharma or the virtue of the good people, uh, spiritual people. What? Dhamma sila, self restraint. Where to control yourself. This control is a negative person. But that is needed uh, to focus in another direction. So, practice of the self-control. Desisting from manifold activities. You know, our life needs some activity. Because you have to earn money. You are all in the society. You will have to do. But how much we need? And how much we have to engage in action? Day and night, 24 hours, then there is no time for God. That's why it should be done virati bahu karma, not tremendously active or all the time working, forgetting God. Not that much. You do as much as needed, but the rest of the time, that is also karma, to think about God. Two types of karma is there. Ramakrishna in the gospel said, one type of karma is that what we do by helping others, doing this, other chore work outside. Another karma is inside. Meditation, prayer, these are also karma, is it not? These are tremendous karma. It is much difficult karma. Because when you sit for meditation, to fight with the mind, it goes here and there all the time. To bring him back and to again focus. It is a big karma. Greater karma. That's why Thakur said, pray to mother. That, O oh mother, O oh Lord, increase my inner karma. Reduce my external karma a little so that I can become a little peaceful. <laughs> but you need to do work. That much is needed. That should be done. But to stop excessive activity which exhausts every life. So, Saat. What is the seventh? Seventh is a very high state. Saataba saba mahimaya dekha mote santaya dhika kari lekha Seventh stage is that you will be, it is in your mind is so pure because of this practice, because of this devotion to the holy people and your japa with faith and trust and all this controlling the uh, outward tendencies. And then the seventh comes, Sabo Mohimayo Dekha. Everywhere is Rama, 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 Christ, Christ, Christ. Huh? That is the seventh state you have attained through this process. Now, seven states come spontaneously. To everyone. St. Patrick used to see Christ everywhere. Why? In the front, in the back, in the right, on the left, up, above, below. And our sages and saints said, Sarvam Kaluidang Brahma. Devotees said, Yaha, Yaha Netra Pare, Taha, Taha, Krishna Spure. Wherever you behold, that is Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. So all the saints have experienced that. So that is the seventh state. Mohi Mayo Dekha. Also it can be practiced. Not looking upon everyone as human being, but seeing that veritable God in that every person, because God is seated in everyone's heart. To see God in everyone, that is the seventh stage of practice, or if it comes spontaneously, revelation, whatever. Now, eighth. Athava jatha lava santosha sapanyona hi dekhoi paradesha. Oh, sorry, I have met one point. In the seventh, another point is there. You love the devotees dearer than that of me even. You love God. I will be pleased if you love my devotees. Mote santa adhika kari lekha. The love the devotees, that's why Babu Ramana, Swami Turiya Premananda, you'd see that he used to love the devotees. Any devotee coming at any time, odd time, kitchen is closed, 
he himself will go to the kitchen and start some cooking because the devotees of the Lord has come. So, so much so, one day he gave some food which was kept for the Lord in the afternoon offering. But there is nothing available. He asked somebody to bring those uh, fruits and the sweets what was to be offered in the afternoon because he said the devotees are the veritable uh, personalities of God's child. So their God is manifested. To serve them is service to God. So mote santa odhika. So that is the seventh stage. Seeing everyone as the veritable present uh, presentation of the Lord and particularly loving and respecting these devotees in whose heart the Lord is more manifest. Eighth, as I have said, Athavajatha labhashantosha sapanehunohi dekhai paradosha. Eighth stage is, they will be very calm and serene and satisfied with whatever comes. Good comes, okay, O oh Lord, you have sent this uh, happy mood today, thank you. And bad comes, oh Lord, you have sent it for me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> but, but the eighth state is the santosa state, state of perfect uh, satisfaction. Because it is coming from God. He is my beloved. If he likes me eh, to be in some difficult situation, okay, if you like, I love you. We say in our day-to-day -day love situation also, Oh, I love you so much, I can do whatever you say. Is it not? Normally we say that way. So if I love God, then God gives something to me and he loves me. So why am I to discriminate? Good or bad, my choice. And Let him decide whatever he wants to give. So that's santosa. And as a result, sapanehu nahi dekhai paradosa. Don't, they don't see any fault with anyone. That we pray every day before our eating. And not to see fault, find fault with others, but to see our own fault. That is the eighth. And the ninth is Nabama Sarala Sabasana Chalahina Mama Bara Sahio Hara Sanadina. Now ninth is a simplicity, guile like guileless, childlike simplicity. Chalahina. They do not know any crookedness. Ah, whatever you say, it is very open. Everything is open for them. And they don't know how to conceit, how to be uh, dealing with some deception. This, this attitude, they leave them. Their heart becomes so pure, all the crookedness and angularities are gone. So that is the ninth state, that when one becomes like a child. Ramakrishna used to be like a child. So that's why he used to ask for some children who will be of similar mind, pure to the backbone, and have no complication in their mind. That's why... That is the sign the Ramakrishna said that the realized souls like the child, childlike, simple people because they have their friendship there. Because they don't keep anything hide and seek. That we keep something here and say something in the <laughs> mouth because here is something, there is something. Because I don't want to expose myself, what is in me. But that type of devotion takes them to that simplicity. And Mama Bharoso Hiyo Harasanadina. Thinking of me, he, he feels that God is for me. Mama Bharosa. And with that hope, God is protecting me. So he never gets depressed. Or she never finds any mood of bringing herself or himself down to the level of depression. Because what it matters? God is for me. The Lord of the whole universe is for me. Who I care for? Why I am to worry about? What will happen? So they become fearless. These are the two signs of spirituality, fearlessness and joy. See, a devotee ultimately becomes fearless. Now, he says that, you know, I have told you about the nine different stages of devotion. But, suppose, when we will attain to this ninefold devotion, it is a long way to go. But what is our hope then? Rama says, don't worry. If out of these nine, de nine descriptions of devotion I have given, you have one, oh, then you are a good devotee. <laughs> <laughs> he says, Nabamahu ye kahu jinnha kahoi 
नारी पुरुष सचाराचर कोई सोई अतिशय प्रिय भामिनी मोरे सकल प्रकार भगति दिल तोरे जोगी बिंद दुर लभगति जोई तो कहु आजु सुलभ भई सोई सेड यू नो नवम आउट ऑफ दिस नवम नाइन ए कहु ओनली इवन वन जिन्ह को होई एनी वन हु पोजेस दिस वन क्वालिटी ऑफ दिस नाइन देन वेदर ही और शी बी ए मैन और ए वुमेन ए मे बी सचर अचर ए मूविंग एनिमल मूविंग एनिमल नॉन मूविंग सेंसियंट और इनसेंसियंट दैट इज मोस्ट बिलावेड टू मी आई लव दैट डेवोटी आउट ऑफ दिस नाइन क्वालिटीज इफ वन हैज वन क्वालिटी सो वी हैव सम क्वालिटी आई थिंक वी कैन बी प्राउड ऑफ दैट टू डेवलप मोर एंड ऑल दिस टाइप्स ऑफ भगति डिवोशन विल बी एस्टैब्लिस्ड ग्रेजुअली इन हिम एंड देन अल्टीमेटली ही और शी विल अटेन जोगी बृंद दरल दूर लभ गति जोई हुई इज द रेयर स्टेट ऑफ अचीवमेंट ऑफ द योगीज फॉर हुई दे आर डूइंग योग प्रैक्टिस फॉर लाइव्स एंड लाइव्स दैट स्टेट ऑफ परफेक्शन यू विल अटेन तो कहु आजु सुलभ वेरी इट इज यर पैथ वेरी इजी डिरेक्शन आई हैव गिवन टू अटेन टू दैट सेम फ्लाइट हुई द योगीज विल अटेन यू विल अटेन बाई दिस practice of devotion and saying so rama said let me go <coughs> he said no i'll not ask you to go but i don't need this body to carry on it is already old very old and eh? it is waiting for you to see you in physical body so i'll sit here and she sat there and in meditation she left her body eh? and the body eh, entered into light and that ends some of this nine fold devotion <laughs> so here we pray that if we have little love like that either we have satsang holy company or someone is absorbed in japa or guru bhakti or whatever all this has been mentioned any one will lead to other that's also another important not necessarily all is possible for us because we have our limitations but if one starts at any point the others will be added to the life thank you all i close with prayer ओनमधनामुदाचते पूर्णस्यूर्नमधा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शाति शाति शांति There is one unbroken undivided limitless unitary spiritual reality This manifold discrete ever changing manifoldness makes no difference in the unity of that existence peace 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 be unto all